Welcome to an action-packed edition of ARG Presents. I'm Amigo Aaron, joined by a man who, at birth, had the same moniker as today's subject, the bulky handheld. I give you the Brent. Bam. What? You heard me. The bulky handheld. That was you as a child. Actually, I believe I was a very normal sized child. Keep it telling wasn't yourself that bulk boy. I became bulky. Yeah, right. Whatever, man. So, if you joined us last week, and a few of you did, we spun the wheel. We made the deal, the exciting deal, Brent. This week, we'll be traveling back, back from whence we came, to take another special look at the game gear, Brent. The Sega yes. game gear. Now, you'll recall. Uh, this is a this is a uh, retro rewind spin, Brent. We covered this one back in the day. Do you, I don't suppose you know what episode that was, do you? It was in the forties. Yeah, I believe yep. it was, and I believe we covered uh, Woody's something. Woody, Woody Pop. And what was the? Do you recall the other game we covered on that? Oh, did, you know, uh, no, it was a Ninja Gaiden. That's what it was. And let me tell you something. Last week I misspoke, saying that I enjoyed Woody Pop. I lied. I told Woody you. Pop was garbage. I told you. I told you it was no good. You didn't believe me. You were like, oh, no, Woody Pop, I believe it was excellent. No, Woody Pop, no good. So, yeah, it was garbage. I would say that the first batch of games was not what I would call top shelf. But I guarantee you, beyond all doubt, that this week the games are the best games you've ever seen. Brent picks a winner every week. Coming off his one of his all-time great picks, there is a 0% chance that he failed you. <laughs> Brent, what do you remember about the Sega Game Gear? Did you know anything about it in the first place? I mean, you've never had one of these things, have you? No, my, my buddy had one. Uh, so I, I played it quite a bit when we uh, would get together, mm -hmm. and we'd be playing one-player console games, and someone else would have the Game Gear playing it. So yeah. it was a way to hang out back in the day. You know, uh, just to go, I'm going to run through this. We've already talked about the Game Gear, if you want to go back and listen to the first episode. But just to run over the particulars, uh, this was a uh, this was released... In the nine, 1990 uh, in Japan and uh, April of 91 in uh, Europe and North America. And came out at a price of 150 American dollars, which is brought around 300 bucks by today's uh, standards. Uh, it had a decent run, you know. Unfortunately, it was up against some pretty stiff competition in the Game Boy, uh, the Atari Lynx, and the uh, NEC's Turbo Express. All capable, uh, uh, you know, handhelds. Where would you say this fell amongst those handhelds, Brent? It, second. Oh, you think it? Was it second. I mean, do you, I'm talking about in your heart. Oh, if which one? It was if second. you could own one of these, <laughs> so what? Game Boy first? Yeah, oh yeah. So you got absolutely. no love for the Lynx or the Turbo Express? No, I've never played a Turbo Express, and I have played a Lynx, and the screen is horrible. Uh -huh. At least on the on the uh, debut model. Yeah, uh, this thing has a lot in common with the old Master System, Brent. Uh, and it, a lot in common. Yeah, uh, yeah, and it it, it would it, it got stuff poured around back and forth. Not a bad thing, man. I, in, in my opinion. Now I'm going to switch over to Camera One because I actually have a Game Gear. Let's go over some of the particulars here on this thing. So here's your Game Gear right here. It's a, it's actually it, it is bulky. Let's not lie here. It's a bulky device. You can see how thick that sucker is for you at uh, listening home. You're talking, uh, what is it, an inch and a half, Brent, inch, inch thick. More than that. It's yeah. thick. You've got uh, two, you've got your two buttons here. You've got your little control pad here. Uh, it feels good, and the thing's got, I'm going to turn it on here, the thing's got good, uh, the thing's got good sound. Listen. <laughs> I love that. you got your cartridge slot in the back. The screen, I mean, this this thing's getting old, obviously, but you can see, it's, it still looks pretty good. I don't know if you can see that in the camera or not. Uh, no, camera's not big enough. The, uh, the, uh, but it's got a nice backlight. It does. You've got a... Uh, it eats batteries for it, it does. but it has a nice backlight. You've got a volume knob on the left top. Or, or, yeah, and, or, excuse me. You've got a volume yeah volume knob on the left top and a brightness knob on the right side. Uh, start two buttons. And then you've got two... This is the killer on this thing, Brent, uh, because these things get lost all the time. You've got two battery-covered areas that take three double A's each, so you're talking yeah. six double A batteries in this in this bad boy. It's got a good it's got a good speaker. Now this thing came out with all kinds of accoutrement, uh, Brent, including uh, this crazy thing here. I'll grab it here. 
there's a battery pack. Brent mentioned this thing eats batteries. So you could buy this gimmick here. It was an extended battery pack. It literally screws on the back of this thing, and then it and then the power goes into the power the power uh, the power port on the on the uh, machine. But that makes it even thicker and heavier. It's massive at that point. You're yeah. carrying around. This is not something you put in your pocket. And this no. was probably probably the downfall of the Game Gear. The fact that it was no the bulky. downfall of the Game Gear was it was a complete battery hog well, in that, my opinion. That's what I mean. But I mean also it, it, it's it's it, it's got power. I mean you got to think a portable master system is quite an is quite a, uh, a, a, a an interesting proposition. Oh, it was an engineering marvel. Yeah, and it, and it yeah. it's got a lot of jack. I mean it could play some pretty good stuff. You're talking. I mean, well, we if you've played the Master System, it, it's capably play the Master System stuff pretty well. Uh, the problem is, like you said, it, that that comes at the cost of having six AA batteries, which is ludicrous. Now, I will say, I have uh, I have played mine a lot this week, and because uh, I played my game on my on the machine, and I, I've you know I put six batteries in it, and I played it all week, and I'm still going strong. But there's really no. I mean, you. <laughs> You know, when you lose your last battery, that's six batteries you've got to replace. So it, yeah, you know, and then you've got to carry around six batteries. You know, the, the price, the price of a handheld from back in the day was a little bit different, except for the Game Boy, because like I said, the Lynx and the uh, and I don't know about the 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 uh, Turbo Graphics one, but the Lynx was another one. It was a it, it it was tough to keep around, and this thing's just too darn big to to carry around. But I mean, it's comfortable to play. It's a sad thing. I, I enjoy. I enjoy playing it. But it's all oh, the ergonomics on it aren't bad. I just I mean, you it, have it, to have a little bit larger than probably kid hands. Uh, yeah, but it's okay. Yeah, yeah. The uh, uh, the truth of the matter is that's what the, I, I'm not even sure that's what sunk it. The Game Boy jumped out to an insurmountable lead, didn't it, Brand? Well, Nintendo's a, a uh, force. Yeah, I mean, if this and, uh, if this had predated the Game Boy, maybe you got something. You know, yeah, but uh, I mean, and the thing is, the Game Boy technically is no not in the same stratosphere as this. And I will say, I was incredibly impressed with the sound and music on this machine. Uh, yeah, it's pretty. Decent. It's real good, uh, and we'll get into that a little bit more later. Now, since we're talking about the Game Gear, this thing, uh, you know, we both independently picked games that involve Sonic this week, uh, yes. Brent. So. Sonic, of course, was a huge deal for Sega uh, back in the Dizay, and they were using their Sonic, you know, power on this thing to try to get these uh, units to move uh, with limited success. This thing had no less than ten Sonic titles. Ten. Think about that. That's ridiculous uh, <laughs> for the overall game total, uh, and, and they were a mixed bag. Let's just put it that way. But uh, several of these are. Uh, shared a release on the Master System. So if you like Sonic, this is the system for you. So, with all that said, Brent, uh, it was our duty to pick two more games from the uh, from the eh, decently sized uh, available games on the Game Gear. We're going to let you uh, lead the show this week, Brentster, with your game. What do you got here? I thought, huh, I haven't done... Uh, a good racing title for a while. And unfortunately, <laughs> that streak continues because I took a look at Sonic Drift 2. A <laughs> uh, little history on Sonic Drift 2. Sonic Drift, the first one, never made it to the States. In fact, it never made it anywhere out of Japan. But when it came to Sonic Drift 2, that's how it was released over in North America. So everyone was like, hey, where's Sonic Drift? And they were like, I don't know, here's this game. Uh, in Europe, they made it a little more intelligent decision and called it Sonic Drift Racing. At least that's what their box said. But when you turn on the game, it still said Sonic Drift 2 on the title card. Classic. So what are you going to do? Yeah. Uh, this was developed by Sega and Arc Systems Works. Uh, it came out in March of 95 for the Japanese and European markets, and actually a r later release uh, for November 95 for the North American audience. Uh, this actually has a few things for like historic Sonic reasons. Uh, it was the first time Metal Sonic was a playable character in the games. Uh, it also introduced a few new characters over the first game for the Japanese audience that might have played it. 
uh, which was Fang and Knuckles. So what is Sonic Drift 2? It's a kart racer, and it is in the same vein as your Mario Karts or any, your your uh, whatever the PlayStation Kart one was called. Uh, it's your same basic bear. You have your different racers who have different attributes in like speed and acceleration and handling, and you race around different tracks, picking up power-ups and using special moves. Um, something that makes... Sonic Drift 2 a little unique is they actually had some tracks that weren't circuits, weren't loops. They were just drive from point A, going to point B, whoever gets there the fastest wins, no laps, just an elongated straight track. Well, not straight, but it was turns, but uh, wasn't a loop. <clears throat> Which, that's pretty interesting. Uh, I think you can do a lot with that. The game sort of tries to tell a story about how, you know, Eggman has one of the the Chaos Emeralds, and you're driving through all the levels to get to his uh, final layer, and then, you know, you race him out. Of course, he races in all the other tracks, too. The story's pretty loose, to say the least. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> you have your normal uh, power-ups, like your speed, a burst of speed, or... You can lay down landmines or you can become invincible, that sort of thing. And then there's a few unique things uh, where it has a jump. And it's actually a jump that means something because there are gaps in the track from time to time. Uh, and for those who don't have a power up, a jump power up, there are springs on the track that you would hit and jump over the uh, pits and whatnot. So it's a. it seems like it should be a pretty strong game. It's got a ton of characters. You know, there's Sonic, Tails, Eggman, Rose, which is uh, Sonic's kind of love interest, Metal Sonic, Fang, which is uh, uh, was re released just a game before this, and Knuckles. So it's a pretty diverse cast. Everyone has, you, you can pick between like an evil guy or a good guy. And the tracks are interesting enough uh, the, the environments that they're in are unique. You know, you've got your grasslands where it looks very green, and then you've got space levels where, you know, everything's dark, and if you fall off the track, you die. So it's got good variety in that. However, it controls like a semi-truck, <laughs> and the screen does not give you nearly enough draw to see what's happening. And yes. all in all, in my opinion, this all boils down to a limitation of the game gear. Uh, and the reason why I say that is the draw distance is so small, and objects come up on you so fast, you don't know if the track is a power-up or if it's a, a hazard. And the game moves at a good clip, which sounds great, but it actually runs, you move so fast through the game that you do not have time to make the decisions. And even if you did figure out what, if it was a power-up or a hazard, um, some of the characters' maneuverability is so low that you don't have time to get out of the way. So I, I was so disappointed because I wanted to like this game. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of kart racers, love the Mario Kart games, and... Uh, I really thought that this was going to blow my socks off. I mean, it comes, it has 18 courses. 18, that's tons, in my opinion, for a portable kart racing game. Uh, but when you can't get the core gameplay down, none of that other stuff matters. Do you have an opinion on this, Aaron? What did you think of it all? I have no opinion. <laughs> okay, well, let's just move on. <laughs> Listen, you, you nailed it. This is a game that is... Yeah, it's close. It's close to being a, a decent game, but the it, you're right. The draw distance is not good. Uh, it, it it's not good at all. Now I, let me give some give the game some props. All right. And also, I didn't think the sound. I didn't think the music was all that great either. Uh, to be completely honest, so the sound was not great. But I will give the game. It was okay. It, I thought it was. Okay. It was okay. Not great. Um, I like the fact that you get so many different environments to race in. All right. Yeah. You get a decent number of guys to pick from, right? Uh, um, 
despite the name, it's not that drifty. I didn't think. Uh, oh well, no! I was thinking no, that, like Tokyo Drift, game, yeah. man. Uh, which I, I, I don't like Drift. I mean, this is we know we all know what this is. This is like the you know the old uh, Mario Kart ripoff. But uh, I thought it was okay. I thought the controls were okay. Uh, the uh, it, you know some people don't like the way you fire the weapon. I didn't have a problem with that. Uh, yeah, you fire with up yeah. and use your buttons for gas and brake. I don't have a problem <laughs> with that. I mean, although eh. really, you could have had brake be the back and use that. But it doesn't matter. You, you should have had. It, it should have been options. Well, That would have been an easy option to put you're in. You're right. But, I mean, it's not the worst. That's, that's what I'm saying. Unless you're uh, uh, playing stuff on the Amiga and you're used to pushing up to go, and that could be a problem if you're not used to having a button to go. But I like the fact that some of the tracks aren't loops. Now, that's could pretty cool, you know. You just go from beginning to the end. Uh, but all that said, I thought the weapons were sort of pedestrian, and the but the big killer is that is the draw distance. It's just these games. You remember that game you like? Uh, What's it called? Uh, uh, the one where you drive the little tiny cars on the tabletops and stuff. Yeah, uh, micro machines. Yeah, micro machines. This is the like the three D version of that. It, there's not enough. You can't see far enough ahead. And the turns are like they're they're are all extreme, man. There, I mean, there are lots of curves. You can fall off some of the areas. And that's no good, you know. I just well, I don't mind that. I do because I fell off a lot. Okay, <laughs> I mean, I do. My mind it plenty. Uh, I, I'm not gonna sit here and say I didn't win any races, but I wasn't motivated. And keep in mind now, this one I don't own. So I had this thing on a nice big TV, you know, kicked back old school, yeah. and I was still having trouble seeing what was going on. I can't imagine playing this game on this little screen here, this little foggy screen, uh, it would be uh, uh, a recipe for disaster. So that that's a big problem, frankly. I just, it, the draw distance wasn't good enough. Here's something to note. Uh, where the Game Gear, the screen on it is wide. Yeah. It's like a wide screen. Well, it's not that, that wide. That gives you even less up-to-down distance yeah. for draw for a game like this. Well, yeah, and um, they've got him centered pretty, not in the middle of the screen, but close. And so it just, I mean, the thing is what really, this, I don't want to bury this game because the fact that it exists on a portable is pretty impressive, frankly. Yeah. I mean, you're talking a 3D racing game. You know, this isn't an overhead, over the top Well, thing. no, it's a sprite Well, you know what I mean. Game. I mean, it's you've got a Pseudo cool scrolling 3D. track. You know, yeah. sort of like a, uh, uh, sort of like a uh, uh, outrun or something. I mean, it looks good. You know, it's just it, it's it, they just couldn't quite seal the deal in the gameplay for me. And you know what the ultimate killer for this game is? What's that? The AI, because it, it blatantly cheats. Yeah, oh yeah, there's <clears> rubber <throat> banding for days. Have, yeah, I mean all the all the kart racer games has that I'm gonna catch up whenever I want to AI. Yeah. But this game takes it to the absolute extreme. You can pick up every power up on the track. Uh, you know, get out in front, pick up all the power ups, and the the computer will still just like ah, I didn't pick up a power up, but I'm going to use one. And it's like also oh, you're saying it straight up cheats. Is what you're saying? Oh no, yeah, it, it absolutely cheats. You know, it's it's funny you should mention that. Because... No matter how far ahead you are, yeah. no lead is ever safe. Yeah, yeah, it can catch up in a blink of an eye. Uh, well, we also should mention that the, that the map takes up half the screen, and that's that's always that's probably not the best decision. It's funny. I was reading some uh, of some of the reviews on this, and one guy mentioned that the original version of this game, which we ha don't have, uh, had a, a real bad AI, and had and so they they sort of overcompensated. He thought in this one, so that may be part of it. I guess the first one you could run over. Something else I read that was interesting is that the apparently the the original version of this game, the first one, had this real awesome, believe it or not, had these cool endings for your characters. Yeah, <laughs> this one has basically no endings. So they, yeah, they, it just yeah they nix that. Although really, if you want endings or more tracks, I'd probably take more tracks. You know, and so that that's one place this, this game delivers. But yeah, yeah. I, personally, I, I endings on a kart racer, man. I mean, I understand why super uber fans wanted that kind of thing because yeah. it kind of pads out the universe even more. But for me, at the end of the day, I want a kart racer with solid controls and good gameplay. And unfortunately, uh, Sonic 2 Drift could not deliver. You got half uh, You got half that. It's got yeah, solid I, controls. The gameplay, not so good, Al, frankly. Now, even with all that I said, even with, this is not 
worst game in the world type material. This is just not a great game. Uh, if you can fire this up on an emulator, uh, you might get a few moments of enjoyment, but I certainly wouldn't seek this out to buy it. Uh, I, I would emulate you, it before I'd play it on a, on the actual game gear. Yeah, now, you because know, at least then you can take advantage of a larger screen. Now, I will say, uh, this is a slight side topic here, but the Game Gear it has the ability to, like, that people have installed different screens in them, you know, which cuts yeah, down their battery life screens, and stuff. And, yeah. and so, it, well, just like LCD, you know, better, newer ones. If you were, if you had one of those, I could see playing, you could probably get away with playing this with some comfort. You know, it's still going to be, it's, I mean, the limitations aren't the hardware in this one, but the hardware is not going to help you. But yeah, this one probably would play better on, on your, on your TV, but it's not, if you're going to play a, a cart game on your TV, this ain't the one. And the funny thing is, uh, I've played, Sega released some uh, Sega based cart games, like, like newer ones that were actually pretty good. You know, yeah. so this well, one. But, and this is. This is available in a million different compilations. Anytime they release a Sonic compilation, this seems to find its way on it. Yeah. If you did want to buy the actual cart, you're only going to be in for about 15 bucks. Yeah. Uh, so it's not some kind of rare gem or anything like that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. There you go. Well, we had we had some Discord action Jackson on this, Brinster. Uh, right. let's, let's have a quick look here. Uh, All our, right. Our good buddy, our good and dear friend, Graham W. Vepke chimes in. He says, I have a soft spot for this game as it was my it was the first game my son and youngest daughter ever wanted to play. It is part of the Sonic Gym Collection on the PS2, and that's how they played this. Unfortunately, not on the actual Game Gear. It's an approachable kart racer with simple enough controls for my son who was six and my daughter who was four when they first played this. As it was their first game, I had to demonstrate a heightened level of enthusiasm for it, even though it is, in my opinion, an average racer. The game, however, is better than in its original Game Gear format. This version includes this. The version included in Sonic's Gems Collection is visually squished and f slower for some reason. Coincidentally, my huh. youngest daughter loves the more recent Sonic All Stars race. That's what I was talking about. Transformed on the 360 which is potentially a spiritual successor. Six out of ten from the, from Graham. And yes, the, uh, Sonic All-Star Racing, I, that's what I have played. It, it is uh, way, 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 way better. Yeah. Uh, our good pal, our lifelong chum, Frodo NL, chimes in. Simple, colorful racer that just works. Nothing spectacular, but fun to play for a short while at least. Six out of ten from from Frodo. And of course, our good our good friend, Mitsuyama, writes in. This is an okay racer. I was using emulation, so I cannot comment on the game and its original hardware. However, the graphics and sound were both quite nice. The game runs fairly fast, but I did detect some slowdown when multiple cars were displayed. There's absolutely some slowdown. Um, my main criticism is that the draw distance on the track is a little too short. Also, the handling of the cars is not good. Having drifted the title led me to expect that I would be skidding around corners, but I just don't get the feeling when playing. Ma making some of the tracks point-to-point -point races rather than circuits is a nice idea, but this does not change the driving experience. Inevitably, the game will be compared to Mario Kart, which is a little unfair as we did not get a handheld Mario Kart game until the Game Boy Advance fi five years after this game. However, Mario Kart is more fun. Five out of ten. Five out of ten on that I one. Think that's, so. I think that's very uh, fair. Yeah, yep. I agree with all that. I mean, listen, uh, uh, it is what it is when it comes to this game. The game is... Uh, 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 ambitious. Let's go with that. And uh, a little bit too ambitious, I think, uh, to get the job done. So, well, Tapioca Man, what did you bring to the table? Well, you know, I wanted to play something I owned on my game gear, and so I looked through my collection of games, and I'm just not going to go all over, but I, I've got Sonic, Sonic 2, the game I picked, uh, and Mortal Kombat 1 and 2, and Columns. That was pretty much all I've got. So, I, and I thought, well, <laughs> let's pick the game I picked, which was, of course, Sonic Chaos. My kind of yes. game. It's got chaos in there. Chaos. So, yes, another Sonic game on the Game Gear. But I couldn't help myself. This is the, I think, the third title release for the, uh, in the Sonic range on the Game Gear. This I one, believe you're correct. This one developed by an outfit called Aspect. 
uh, who worked on the Sonic 2, and th this is considered the spiritual successor to Sonic 2, released uh, on the Game Gear over here and in Japan and in Europe all in November of 93. The wacky thing is, Brent, this also got a Master System release, but only in the PAL regions. So uh, yeah. that's interesting. Uh, also in 93, in fact, this was out in October. So it actually came out early on the uh, on the Master System in the PAL regions. So what is Sonic Chaos? Well, Sonic Chaos did something interesting. It allowed you to play as Tails. The uh, little yellow, uh, what is that thing, a fox? Or what is Tails, yeah. Brent? Uh, yeah, fox. Uh, uh, he's a flying fox, uh, which I've never seen one do that. The old tail-twisting gimmick. And I will say, playing the game with the, the different character, actually, <laughs> you get a, a pretty different experience, I have to say. So yeah. th this is pretty standard fare uh, for a Sonic game. Uh, you uh, run through the levels. It's got... now. I played the first two in the series. I've got I've got the first two, and they're I would say they were decent mobile renditions of the Sonic uh, of the Sonic universe. I mean, they didn't stray too far from the source material, but they weren't the 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 uh, Game Gear is not as fast as as one would want Sonic to be because it's Sonic. He's he's moving fast. This one I think is the closest one to matching the kind of speed that you would get on the Genesis. Uh, Sonic, this one includes the loops, it includes the twists, it includes the little platforms that you can, that you can only go across if you're in like mega speed. It's, this has the uh, Sonic charge where you have to you hold the button down and you can kind of ram guys. It's got pretty much all the stuff you would expect from the, uh, from the console version. Uh, Tails does pretty much the same crap, except Tails can fly. Where Sonic can just go. Well, that's pretty different. Well, Sonic is, is <laughs> faster, but Tails can fly. And Tails fly. If you've ever played as Tails, uh, he—it's not like this guy's Air Wolf. I mean, he sort of lumbers up and down, and he can go so far before he runs out of tail gas or whatever. And I yeah, guess, limited flight. You've got to tap the button to do right. it. Right, but I mean, it, uh, it does change the gameplay. Absolutely. Now, I yeah. will say, you know, uh, I don't play a lot of Sonic. All right, I'll be honest with you. It's not. It's not. My, it's not my favorite, but one of the aspects of Sonic that I like is that you could zoom through a level in like 15 seconds if you, if you if you get lucky and you can jump in the right spots or whatever. And that's sort of something that was kind of missing in the uh, first couple of Sonics. I mean, like I said, they didn't do a, a great job with the with your abilities to 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 be speedy. This one they actually get it right. I mean, I love that about this. This is one where you could like. You look at these levels, they're big and cool looking, and you can just fly right through them like a maniac. That's what I like. I like the, I like that crap. Uh, this one has like all the same bits you would find in the console in terms of like being able to go through like breakable stones and stuff like that, find secret areas. It's got bumpers, just like a pinball machine. It's got the same crap you would expect. Now, uh, the game looks good. Uh, I, I think they did a great yeah. job of converting this over. The, of course, you've got a limited screen size, and so if you picture like a, a Sonic game from the Genesis, but like zoomed in, basically, is the way they did it. So Sonic is, I mean, in some ways, he's a little bit, I like think it seems bigger to me because he's you're zoomed. He's a beefy stri sprite, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. So you had the same feeling on the, on, on the size of the screen. He's, it seems like it's kind of zoomed in, but it actually works. And unlike your game, you can sort of get away with having a little less uh, uh, forward sight on this game than you can a kart race. I mean, don't get me wrong. It'd be a lot better if you could see further away, but it it doesn't get you killed a lot, is my, I guess what I'm saying. Uh, well, this game works with the widescreen. Yeah. Because you want to see more left and right as opposed to up and down, which is exactly what the screen gives you. Uh, well, the screen, I'm telling you, this screen is almost perfectly square. It's per not that wide. I've got, it's a little bit wide. I've got one right here. It's not that wide. It's about, it's a little wider, but it's not like, it's not like it's a full wide screen. But yeah, I you, agree. you yeah. get some real estate there. Um, <clears throat> let's talk about the music in this game. This game has sound to beat the band. <clears throat> I love yeah. the music in this. You know, the Sonic games are known for having good tunes. And this has some great tunes in it. I couldn't believe uh, that that this little handheld was putting out that kind of uh, kind of music. Something else, this thing, unlike a lot of these handhelds that I've uh, that I've had or played, 
the sound on this thing is loud. I mean, this thing could really crank it up. Now, you're probably killing those six batteries when you have this thing jacked up. <laughs> but, I mean, it's so loud that you could, you have to turn it down. It's too loud, you know, which is pretty cool. Um, I Most of the time, I ended up playing Tails. I guess because Tails is sort of easier. You know what I mean? He is easy, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because, well, Tails, you get more continues, and you also can fly. So, if there's crap yeah. you can't get to, because one of the things about this, uh, about this and much, many other Sonic games is that you have to actually... You know, try to get, find how to get to places, and that often involves that. I mean, that's sort of the puzzly aspects of this game. It's not, I wouldn't call this a puzzle platform or anything, but you know what I mean. You have to sort of try to find a way to get there with Knuckles or with Tails. You can just sort of cheat and, and roll up in there. Uh, every I think it's every fourth level is an end boss, uh, maybe every third, third level. Every third level is an end boss. The end bosses, uh, I actually got this is me. I got to like the fourth end boss in this game. I was stunned. I got past. There's a there's a turtle guy yet to beat. Then there's a uh, there's a guy that that sort of uh, 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 hangs off the side of a pole, almost like a he almost looks like a combination of a gorilla and a crab. Uh, he's yet, yet to beat. Uh, there's another yeah, guy, yeah. but the guy that got me, uh, uh, he was real tough. The pole, the guy on the pole was is is difficult. There's this guy. I forgot about. It. He's like a, a snake robot. But I like the idea that this thing has the end bosses. It's got the bit where you zip past the sign, you know, from a Sonic game. It's, yeah. it's got a lot of the aspects that you would expect in a Sonic game. Uh, and this one is widely regarded in terms of pure Sonic title as the as probably the best one on the Game Gear. And having played the first two, I would concur. I think this one sounds better and looks better than the first two offerings. Uh, what did you think of this one, Brendan? I'm assuming you hadn't played it before. I have not played it before, and full disclosure, I'm not a huge Sonic fan. All right, fair enough. Uh, just the gameplay and uh, uh, the aesthetics and everything, not really my thing. And I recognize they're good games. They're just not for me. Uh, and I want to get two negatives of this game out of the way real quick. All right. Uh, it's too short. It is. And it's too easy. Yeah, I agree. Okay? I, well, I mean... I it wasn't too easy for me, but it was. I did pretty well, and that was my first and second play. So if I do pretty right. well, it's my first and second play. Then it's probably too easy. So let's forget about those two things. It's too short and it's too easy. Let's not comment on that anymore. It's a great game. It's an absolute masterpiece of a game for people who don't play Sonic. Yeah. Uh, the all the boards have branching pass, paths. Uh, you, there's no one way to get through a stage. All of them have multiple ways to go. And it rewards uh, exploration, and it does not punish just trying to get to the end. Uh, there are different ways to get to the end. Some are faster than others. Uh, you can explore the levels and find all the gems or all the coins and yep. all the power-ups and all the extra lives and all the, the uh, uh, fun ways of doing things. And it doesn't punish you for doing that either. If you collect 100 rings, you go to a bonus stage, and the bonus stage is where you collect the uh, emeralds. Unlike Sonic games before this, it's not just uh, it drops you into the same bonus stage every time. Depending on what zone you are in is depending on what bonus game you play. And they have ones where you're flying around uh, on rocket shoes, which is new to this game, where you yeah. literally can, Sonic will just fly left and right, up and down, you have full control over them. Um, and depending on the bonus stage, you have to search for the emerald. Sometimes it's fairly easy to find them, sometimes it's hard. Uh, I ended up finding, I think, three, uh, and I played through the entire game. So, <clears throat> Did you beat it? I did not beat it. I could not get past the last boss. Um, and the only the reason I couldn't get past the last boss is I could not find uh, a ring to allow me to have an extra hit. And that's something else this game does. All the bosses, uh, the third stage are just boss stages. It's a very small stage, and then you fight the boss. Yeah. And in that small section of stage, there is a ring hidden somewhere that you can get to give you that extra hit. Uh, all of them have it, even the final stage. 
I really, really enjoyed this game. I enjoyed the amount of speed it allowed me to have without me feeling like mm. I was going to get hit into a spring wall or fall into spikes. Yeah. Some of the later levels, it does make you have to really think about and time your jumps. Yeah. Uh, and it, it, you might run into a pit one or two times, but it's very <clears throat> generous with extra lives. It's very generous with continues. So you just die. You think, okay, I know that pit's there this time. I'm not going to fall into it. You jump. You keep going with the level. There are tons of little toys and knickknacks. Uh, you can get a spring that basically attaches to Sonic. Yeah. And you it allows you to jump around on a spring. Uh, there are carts that you uh, like slidey carts that go down slopes that you can get into and ride those down. It's just something different. The water stage in this game, which is uh, stage four is optional you can which i didn't get to that if you go down the lower path you're in the water if you take the upper path and manage to get up there you can go through the entire stage and never touch the water uh it's a perfect game for folks that don't like sonic because it still portrays what sonic is this fast moving hedgehog you know with these crazy environments uh without all of the pitfalls of some of the previous games where you have to you have to know the stage before you can run through them. This, the very first time you see them, you can run through them and have a pretty good time. Yeah, the, you know, you brought up a lot of good points here. The bonus stages were a pleasant surprise, uh, honestly. Uh, the, the rocket shoes, which uh, they are on the bonus stage, actually, they, you can, if you're playing Sonic, you can get those occasionally. You'll get those as a power-up, and it'll let you fly yeah. around for a little while. They're, you know, they're not, it's not like having tails. Oh, I mean, you go a lot faster, but it's it's a different sort of flying than Tails does. Tails, yeah, yeah. Tails doesn't get them. Uh, I think this may be, it, this could have been the first time Tails was ever a playable guy. I'm trying to, I think this, I, I'm, don't, don't quote me on that. But I mean, it, I liked, I, I like the aspect of having two characters in this. I, it doesn't seem like they'd make that big a difference. But to me, like I was not nearly as good with Sonic as I was with Tails. And not, you know, and I know, yeah, Tails is the easier one. But it just, it, I like the idea that it gives you a different feel. Plus, I like the idea that there's an easier guy for, like, the dumb guy like me that needs, yeah. that needs, the, that needs the help. You yeah, know? I played with Sonic almost exclusively. Yeah. I, I checked Tails out, but it was literally load him up, so he could fly what he did. And I was like, okay, I'm going back to Sonic because I enjoyed the speed that Sonic provided. Um, the game does have some slowdown, yeah. and the bosses are pretty easy. Uh, the only reason why... The final boss is hard. Is he has a shot that reflects around the screen and literally bounces off the ceilings and walls and stuff, uh, and he gets several of them on the screen at one time, which makes it fairly difficult. Uh, which was the main reason why I wasn't able to beat it in one setting. But, but this is a game that if you own a Game Gear, I think the game is good enough, even if you're not a huge Sonic fan. To purchase. Yeah. I think this is a, a very approachable Sonic game. Like, if yeah. you had a kid that was wanting to get into Sonic, this might be the first one I'd give him a shot with. Absolutely. And then, and then work him into, like, the... Because, I mean, the, like I said, the speed... You get a Sonic game, but it does, it's not as mega fast, but you it's it's more approachable to me. And like I said, I thought they really balanced it quite well with the Tails character because his special attributes allow you to play the game easier, plus you get all the extra, you know, continues and whatnot. Just... This was a real surprise for me, uh, to be honest with you. It was me as and well. This, and like I, I said, really enjoyed the this. sound and graphics for me put it over the top uh, because uh, you know it looks like if you told me, hey, this is a game that you're playing uh, uh, it, it, on the Mega Drive, uh, I would not have been totally stunned. Uh, as you know, or, and certainly on the Master System, I'd say this is a winner if you if you can find this one for that. But if you've got a Game Gear or you just can, are, are going to emulate it, this this is a, a a darn fun title. Oh yeah, if you if you have to emulate this, if you have any interest in platformings at all, uh, you have to you have to do it. You've got to go out and find this. I w but I and I honestly, like I said, I think it's good enough to buy. I will say this. Of course, I actually played mine on the Game Gear, and I've uh, played it exclusively on the Game Gear here, and. Uh, it's not like I've played this Game Gear a ton. You know what I mean? Like I've got it. You know, it's one of those things you've got it sitting around. But I played this thing on here, and it played. It was plenty playable. So 
I give this the sure. real life seal of approval. I mean, you could actually sit down and play a game of this and not want to rip your own eyeballs out. So that uh, that's that's high praise as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <clears throat> um, this thing reviewed pretty well uh, when it was released. This is one of those things. Uh, the wiki's like, well, it reviewed well when it was released, but like as it's, as the years have rolled on, people don't like it as much. You know, I don't know what that even means because if it, 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 it either reviewed well or it didn't. EGM gave this an 8, 8.25 out of 10, which is a darn good review. Entertainment Weekly gave this an A-. And, th and this is a strange one, Brent. Nintendo Life. I didn't, I've never heard of Nintendo Life. I don't know that magazine. Uh, but apparently, they review non-Nintendo stuff. And they, now, they looked at the Master System version, and they killed it. I think they gave it 4 out of 10. So they didn't like it. But I th I, something tells me it's Nintendo Life. You're not going to get much. Uh, from them on the on with, the, with the Sega, <clears throat> we got some uh, reviews from our buddies in chat in our in our uh, uh, Discord here. Graham W. Vebke writes, uh, "This is a game I've played on the Master System as well as on the Game Gear. The, uh, this game I would describe as a watered down yet more approachable version of the Sonic series of games. Turquoise Hill is easier than Green Hills, for example. I was surprised the city level." which appears much later in the original stage, is stage two in this game. It also introduces a few powers that were present in Sonic CD. That's including that, that spin charge, whatever they call it. That's one of the ones yeah. he's talking about. I quite like playing as Tails in this game because of the flying ability, which at times is useful. If I was going to introduce people or children to a Sonic game, this would be the first one I would show them. It's not, it's not really a game I would choose to play now, though, but it deserves more credit than what uh, for what it is than criticism for what it isn't. The ring counter rolling around zero instead of going to 100 is a quirk that's interesting too. So now I didn't even notice that. So Graham sort of echoed what we talked about, Brent, in terms of this being a good game for kids. Yep. Frodo writes, some uh, somehow I have nothing with Sonic, not with the character, not with the games. This version is at least seems somewhat easier to play than most Sonic games I've tried before. But in the end, it's just Sonic, 6 out of 10. It's Frodo, not a f Sonic fan. Uh, Mitsuyama writes, I'm not a fan of the Sonic platform. This seems to be a reoccurring theme. I'm not a fan <laughs> of the Sonic platform games, and this just seems like more of the same to me. I was using emulation, so I don't know what it's like on the original hardware, but the graphics and sound were both very good when compared to other 8-bit Sonic games. It ran quite fast, but I did get some slowdown when there were lots of rings on the screen. However, yeah. It's not. It's just another Sonic game. Fans of the series will probably enjoy it, but it's just not for me. Six out of ten. Uh, I think that's a fair. I mean, if you're not a Sonic fan, I'm not sure this is going to be the game that converts you. You know what I mean? But uh, uh, I think if you are uh, like sort of a eh Sonic fan or just looking at something for something fun to play on your actual physical Game Gear, this would be the one I'd get. Skip the first two. Get this one. It's a real winner in my opinion. Uh, I looked this Agreed. thing up on eBay, Brent, uh, just to see what just see what the prices were going for on this one. Now they're a little bit all over the map. You can get the loose carts. I should mention that the loose carts uh, for this they they when you actually when you actually are have them loose, they come in these little uh, plastic gimmicks like that, and then you uh, pop it open, and there's your, and there's your game. Uh, in this case, this is Sonic One actually. And so that, that's what the cartridges look like. If you're listening on the radio, they are just little flat cartridges with a big picture on the front. Uh, I guess that just describes every cartridge. Anyway, you can get these loose for about seven, eight bucks, under ten bucks. So cheap, cheap as chips. Uh, if you want the box, the boxes I've seen going for crazy prices all over the map. Uh, sometimes I see them go for say under thirty bucks, and I've seen them go higher than that. So uh, you're probably looking at somewhere in the ballpark of the $25 range, give or take. That your mileage may vary on that one, Brent. Any final thoughts on that one before we take it to the house? No, I think that pretty much covers everything that we need to cover. There you go. It's time. It's time for you know what. It's the wheel, Brent. And the I, wheel. I'm gonna I'm gonna do everything you hate this time. <laughs> Tell them what we added this week, Brent. Uh, we added, we just had to replace our retro piece, and, uh, that got replaced with laser disc games. Laser disc games, always good fun. All right. Uh, wanted to mention real quick, especially since we had some questions about it, if you are signed up, uh, 
for our ARG supporter through Anchor.fm, please, please, please email us at argpresents at mail.com so we can get you uh, into the Discord channel. All of the uh, either Amigo Patreons or Twitch subscribers or uh, Anchor.fm supporters, all those folks get access to the uh, Discord channel regardless of donation amount, anything a dollar and above. So please, 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 if you are looking for your Discord access, please mail us at argpresents at mail.com. Give us what name you signed up under, and we will get you into the Discord. We'll make it happen. We want you there. Join our community. They're wacky. We love them. All right, Brent, we're spinning this sucker. Oh, tell them about the locks, Brent. Tell them about the locks. The locks are things that can't be spun. We've actually rigged the wheel. <laughs> they never, ever come up. Yeah. Give that wheel a spin, Aaron. All right, fair enough. All right, big spin, big spin. No whammies, and... Oh, we almost got a, we almost got a lock. What do we get? Laser disc games. It's another retro rewind. Two in a row. Back to back retro rewind. Two in a row. Unbelievable. Two in a row. So you know what that means. This time next week, Brent, we'll be coming together once again to play laser disc games. Do you remember what we played the first time we played the laser disc games? Uh, I, yes, I remember what I played. I don't remember. I think did I play Ashes and Morella last time? I believe you did, and I played Time Traveler. Oh gosh. We'll do better this time. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Those are not the best. Brent, who do we have watching us live on Twitch? <clears throat> Going through chat, we've got Frodo, we got Mitz, Picard, Roushy, Buck Owens, my lovely, lovely wife. We've got uh, John71 coming at us. We got uh, <laughs> Bomb6 the Bass, or I'm going to guess the That's bass. probably Bass. <laughs> Bomb six the bass. He's here every week. You don't know his days. He's not bass. It's bass, not bass. No, he's a fishing. He's a fishing uh, uh, expert. Oh, God. Uh, Duncan Styles joined us in chat. Let's see some of our lurkers real quick. Uh, we got Lurks, L U R X X. I love that name. Yeah. Uh, Morda, Mor Morda. How's it going? You've got more to your name, but I don't know how to say it. Uh, a 10, uh, another TV viewer. All of our, shout out to all of our lurkers. We love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any parting thoughts before we head out the hills? Uh, I really enjoyed the game you picked, and I'm sorry about my choice. And we're going to come up with a real beauties uh, next week for Laser Disc Games. I'm not going to hold back this time, Brent. It's going to be Laser Mania Run a Wild. Oh. That's right. So, until next week, we bid you all a fond adieu. Thanks for joining us today. We really hope you enjoyed the show. Quick shout out to all of our YouTube subscribers and Twitch followers. A special thank you to Duncan Styles for our vector graphics and Bartbit for our amazing music. Would you like to keep ARG spinning for as little as a dollar a month? You can do so at anchor.fm slash ARG presents. Supporters get entry into the Amigos Discord channel as well as their name called out in the credits. Supporters like these fine folks, Anthony Jarvis, Graham W. Vetke, Terry Howard, Gary Heather, John Schaller, The Slow Norris, Frodo NL, Steve Rasmussen, Chris Folds, Mitsuyama, Retro Algae, Hermsky, John Dackman, and Jerry Dennington. Don't want to explain another credit card bill? That's okay too. You can help us out by leaving us a positive review on Spotify and Apple iTunes. Have an idea for a wheel piece? Send it to us at argpresents at mail.com. We record live every Sunday at 9 a.m. EDT on Twitch. Hope to see you there.